Now, you said control politics and control politicians. Uh, I mean, uh, is this what you really mean? You uh, well, I mean, to, it, uh, I mean it like this, that I think uh, that the, the politicians in the white neighborhood are controlled by the whites in that neighborhood. Most, uh, no white community would allow uh, the politicians in its community to be controlled by someone outside the community who doesn't have the good of that community at heart. Whereas in the Negro community, as a rule, the politician is part of the political machine. The political machine is white, and the political machine isn't uh, uh, really concerned with the conditions that exist in the Negro community, only to the extent that being concerned helps the whole overall objective of that, of that political machine. So the only way to get uh, real progress in the Negro community is to make our people at the mass level conscious of politics and, and that which politics is supposed to produce for us. Once they can see what the politician is supposed to produce, then they themselves can throw their weight behind the politician who's producing. And it is, and it is the responsibility of the politician who represents the community to go out here and eliminate the desegregated school system. You don't have to pick at a school. The, the mayor is responsible. The governor is responsible. The politicians are responsible. So it's our intention to make our people conscious of this. And just, just to give an example, I was in Washington, D.C. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when they were debating whether or not to let the, the uh, civil rights bill come to the floor, listening to Dirksen and some of these others debate whether uh, the Negro is qualified to be a citizen or a human or whatever it was they had in mind. And one of the things I noticed in the back of the Senate gallery, Senate uh, uh, gallery was, uh, or the Senate floor, was a huge map which shows the distribution of Negroes in this country and, and, and oddly, in, in the areas where Negroes uh, were the most densely uh, populated, where the areas were most densely populated by Negroes, these were the senators and the congressmen doing the most to stop civil rights legislation. Whereas if the Negroes in these areas were permitted to vote, they could sweep out of office the same segregationists and racists who are now in control of the government. Well, if you feel this strongly, then why don't you, uh, why don't you run for office? As I understand it, you, uh, you control a, a, a pretty good segment up there in Harlem. You, last time you were with me, I asked you what the membership was. You were then with uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you didn't want to tell me. Now that you're not with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, could you tell me what the uh, membership is? Uh, membership is uh, in Harlem. I mean, what percentage of Harlem? Uh, well, I, I, can, I'll only, I can only answer you like this. All yeah. of our people who are oppressed, exploited, dissatisfied, and impatient are thinking along the same lines today, politically, economically, socially, and otherwise, philosophically so that, this, and otherwise. This takes in a pretty good hunk of Harlem. Certainly. Well, not only Harlem, Philadelphia Well, I'm talking Harlem. about from uh, your, your particular, your immediate home right now. Yes. You don't have Florida or California yet. We haven't given that to you yet, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The thing Already thinking about three yet. Uh, I am one black man, uh, Mr. Harvey, who doesn't think that the white man is going to give up anything. What the black man gets, he's going to have to fight for it. He's going to have to earn it. He's going to have to take it. Nothing will be given to him. Well, then and you say you is, don't advocate violence. And if any, no. Well, uh, how you, what's fighting if it isn't violence? Well, uh, I think you'll find a fight going on in the Senate right now. And, then, and they haven't gotten violent yet, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they've gotten uh, philosophically violent. Uh, if it, it, anytime you have a, a government, and I think 16 of the senatorial committees that control the government, uh, 10 of them are in the hands of Southern senators. Uh, out of the 20 congressional committees that control the government, 12, 12 of them are in the hands of Southern congressmen. Now, here you have the uh, uh, 10 out of 12 committeemen, uh, 10 out of uh, out of six, 10 out of 16 committeemen at the senatorial level are Southern segregationists. 12 out of 20 committeemen at the congressional level are Southern senators, and they're going to tell us that the South lost the war. Why the committees that govern the government are in the hands of Southern segregationists, and the, the president himself is from a state that is a state of discrimination and segregation. He's the, he's in the same category with Eastland and Ellender and all of the rest. So when Negroes become conscious of politics, politically mature, and they begin to see the con game that's taking place today, especially where the Democratic Party is concerned, because it was the Negroes, I think out of the, uh, out of the uh, representatives, 257 of them are Democrat, and only uh, 177 of them are Republican. Two-thirds of the Congress is controlled by the Democratic Party. Out of the, out of the 100 senators, 67 of them are Democrat, and only 33 are Republican. Uh, two-thirds of the Senate's, uh, Senate is controlled by uh, the Democratic Party. And it is the Negro vote that has kept the Democratic Party in power and has kept it in, party in, in the power in Washington, D.C. Despite the fact that the Negro puts the Democratic Party first, the record shows that the, Negro, that the Democratic Party puts the Negro last. And the Democratic Party is able to fool the Negro by telling him that it, it is the Dixocrats in the South that, who are doing it, and a Dixocrat is nothing but a Democrat in disguise.
The same man who's, ho who's over the entire Democratic Party is over the Dixocrats as well as the Democrats. And when Negroes begin to wake up and analyze this political situation, then the Negro is in a position to bring about a bloodless revolution in America by, with the ballot. He'll be in a position to sweep out of office these Southern segregationists who occupy strategic positions over strategic committees. And this in itself will revolutionize America's foreign policy as well as America's domestic policy, and it might save America. But if it is not done with the ballot, then it's going to have to be done with the bullet. I don't know why you don't run and say all this on the Senate floor, uh, Malcolm. We'll, we'll be back with Malcolm X in just a minute. Our guest is Brother Malcolm, or Malcolm X. We're talking to you from Convention Hall, the travel, vacation, and outdoorsman show. Malcolm, what, uh, what is your opinion uh, um, as a politician uh, of Adam Clayton Powell? Well, Adam Clayton Powell probably is uh, the only Negro politician of national stature who is completely independent of any political machine. He's in a more powerful position politically than any, than any other Negro politician, primarily because the Negro in New York is different from Negroes anywhere else in the country in that they are exposed to uh, such a, uh, uh, a great deal of news. The United Nations is there. They're more uh, highly sophisticated where politics and international politics are concerned than any other Negroes in the country. Then, and, and for that reason, it is less, uh, they are less influenced by the propaganda from the daily news media when it's unleashed against another Negro. So, so that, you think that this has all been uh, misleading and oh, yes. uh, misconstrued and everything that uh, we hear that uh, happens with him in Puerto Rico and Europe? I mean, this is... Uh, no, this I'm is not completely... saying that. I'm saying that they, despite all of the uh, negative aspects of Mr. Powell's uh, daily life, that is uh, uh, ma uh, magnified by the press and projected as his whole image instead of only a part of his image, mm -hmm. the Negro is able to look and see this and realize what is being done or, or the effort that's being made. And uh, they overlook it so that it keeps Powell in the best way for Powell to remain in Washington, D.C. is for the white press to continue to attack him. This automatically gets the Negro support. You, uh, you said earlier that you don't recruit uh, and yet uh, Cassius Clay says that you converted him, which is in a form recruiting. Well, only he and I are friends, and the, it wasn't an active uh, effort that was made to uh, recruit him, but Cassius has been a Muslim for four or five years, and uh, I, he and I happen to be very good friends. I was with him in Miami before the fight. I had a chance to study him. So Ca Cassius has more depth than his... Uh, realized by most people. He's a very, very deep thinking person. He has strong convictions. He's more intelligent than they give him intelligent than they give him credit for. In fact, Cassius actually made Sonny Liston whip himself. Not only did he beat Sonny Liston, he beat the press. He beat the Miami Boxing Commission. He he even beat the medical examination the examiner who gave him his uh, examination before the fight. And I think that when people realize that he did this with his brain, then they will somewhat get a better idea of how, how brainy the man actually is. And, in my, and also, in my opinion, Cassius is a good example of the new type of Negro that's coming into existence in America today. The very fact that Cassius will say, I am the greatest. Negroes don't say this. Negroes have been fed the type of uh, brainwashing that America is an expert at to the point where most of them have an inferiority complex and don't want to be superior. They don't want to be the greatest. They just want to be great. Or they don't want to be uh, supreme. <laughs> they just want to be equal, you know? So. Uh, Cassius represents this young, new type thinking Negro today who feels that he is uh, within himself just as capable of becoming the greatest or as great or whatever else anybody else is. He might, I don't think he's the greatest poet or ever will be, I'll tell you that. Uh, do you? Well, there are different forms of poetry. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's as, as for sure. Uh, I... Uh, I've got a couple of more. I tell you what, let's get the business out of the way so we can go right straight through and not uh, be hampered anymore. And uh, so we'll be back with Malcolm X. Brother Malcolm, you uh, you just extolled the virtues of uh, Cassius Clay, the fact that he is smart and he's uh, brilliant. Uh, as I understand it, he's uh, sticking with Elijah Muhammad. He's not following you in, the, in well, this new movement. I, I'm happy that he is. In fact, uh, when I made the move that I did, if you read, I stated at that time that it was my hope and desire that all of the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would stay with him. I'm not uh, interested in carrying on any kind of competition against him, but rather to work among the non-Muslim so-called Negroes 
uh, in a program that doesn't have any religious restrictions, but is designed to g give all of our people an opportunity to become actively involved in an action program that will eliminate the social, political, and economic evils that exist in our community. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it, one thing that must be stressed, you see, I, as I said, I didn't lead the Nation of Islam. I never would have left it of my own volition. And when I was put out, I w not only was I put out, but uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's only son, who is a minister, uh, who formerly was a minister right here in Philadelphia, Minister Wallace D. Muhammad, he was put out right along with me. And, uh, for similar reasons? For uh, about the same reason, yes. Uh, and uh, so, but I don't think that this in any way serves any purpose. The main thing we're interested in is getting uh, an active program on the road, an action program on the road, that all of our people can take part in and uh, get this uh, job accomplished, get the problem solved. Well, now, you say that Martin Luther King and uh, other civil rights leaders have made uh, no headway, or certainly not uh, the headway that you want to see made. What headway do you think that, that you have made? Uh, because you've been talking for a long while. You've been quoted in uh, national publications. You've been on network television and radio. Now, what headway have you made? Well, most people give uh, us the credit for the headway that Martin Luther King and the nonviolent movement has made. Uh, the same when uh, when Jomo Kenyatta was in prison in uh, in Kenya, uh, Tom Mboya became very famous, not because the colonial powers loved Tom Mboya, but Tom Mboya represented the lesser of two evils. Uh, Kenyatta was supposed to have been the head of the Mau Mau. So that uh, when it came to choosing between the lesser of two evils, they uh, would uh, go along with Mboya. Here in this country, the entire nonviolent civil rights struggle has been listened to to a degree and has been given some token, token recognition and some token gains only to keep the Negro from, in, from becoming involved in anything that was too militant and, and that which was non-nonviolent. An example, on uh, February the, uh, on May the 15th of, uh, uh, of last year, on page 26 of the New York Times, uh, it quoted President Kennedy as telling some Southern uh, uh, news editors that they had to give some kind of token gains to the moderate Negro leadership in order to enhance its image to keep the Negroes from going or becoming involved with the Negro extremists, and he specified at that time the Muslims. So what, what's happening here? It's showing that the pre late president himself uh, was trying to get these Southern segregationists to give some token gains to the moderate Negro civil rights groups, not because uh, their cause was just, but because in so doing, it would enhance their leadership image among the Negro masses and keep the Negro masses from going with the more militant Negro group. So uh, the gains that were received by these moderate Negro leaders, they only received them because uh, the fear of the threat that was posed by groups that were more militant than they. Are you anti-Semitic? Anti-Semitic. You've uh, met many of the things that I've read about you, and you've made a mention a couple of times about the Jews and everything, and I'm wondering if you are personally anti-Semitic. No. Uh, how can I be anti-Semitic when the Arabs are semi? Half the Muslim world are, is Semitic. If I was anti-Semitic, I'd be anti-Arab and anti-everything uh, else. No, I think this, that in this country, there's one mistake that the Jews make. Uh, they put themselves in a position where whenever anybody gives an objective analysis of the role that they play, uh, they defend themselves by accusing you of being anti-Semitic. And, and uh, a Negro is not anti-Semitic when he says that the, the man who's exploiting him in his community is white because it is a white man who owns all the stores. Now, is it a, an accident that these whites who own these stores are Jewish? If it's an accident, then uh, the fact that he says the Jew on the corner is exploiting me isn't an anti-Semitic statement. It's just more descriptive of the man who's exploiting him. Is it true that the uh, the leader of the Nazi Party was given an honored position at one of your uh, the leader of the Nazi Party in America was given an honored position at one of your meetings? Uh, there was a, a convention held in Chicago, to which was invited anyone who wanted to come, and uh, this particular person whom you mentioned came, uh, along with other whites, and uh, at that meeting they were anybody who wanted to contend with Mr. Muhammad or support Mr. Muhammad was given an opportunity to do so. He stood, up and he stood up on the floor in front of the podium and expressed himself, but he did not meet any receptiveness uh, among black people. Nobody who is a Nazi or who in any way advocates white supremacy or who is in any way anti-black will ever get any reception among black people. I don't make any distinction between a, 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 a Nazi racist or, or, uh, or any other kind of racist. They're all racist where we're concerned. But I don't think you should put any weight on the Nazis 
that there aren't enough of them in this country. They're not the ones who, who created the segregated school system that, you, that our people are suffer, suffering under. They're not the ones who are behind the segregating housing pattern. So the Nazis, are, uh, uh, if, if that many of them exist, are only being used as scapegoats. The ones, who, the ones who are really responsible are these that call themselves Democrats and Republicans and, and other Lily White organizations. Malcolm, we only have a minute left. Uh, you, you are a very, uh, a very uh, nice fellow to talk to because you do talk. That's one thing. You have an engaging smile. Do you still consider yourself the angriest Negro in America? I think a man can be at his angriest when he's smiling. Is that right? I have a little difficulty smiling myself when I'm Not I'm a black out. man in America. The black man in America has lived in such a, 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 an, an ambiguous society that he has, he ha, he has, he has uh, been forced to develop a very flexible, acrobatic face. And when you find a black man smiling, it's not always from his heart. And I think the day that the white people realize this, then they'll take a more sincere effort to eliminate some of these injustices. Our guest has been Brother Malcolm, or Malcolm X, uh, who I understand got a mere three hours sleep last night just to be here with us today. And for that, I thank you very much for thank joining you. us, Malcolm uh, X, on WCAU. You.